Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Here's a bit of a sad story, but hopefully one where we can all learn something from it and not fall into the same mistakes. I'll share my thoughts on how I would proceed going forward if this was me. By the way, I heard about the story from someone posting it in the Code Monkey Discord, so thanks to Nefi for pointing out this. You can become a YouTube channel member or join on Patreon and join the private Discord. It's a real nice community, I'm there as much as I can, and I also do a private live stream every Saturday. So the game in question in this story is called Repoly. It's a survival and crafting indie game made by a solo developer. So you gather resources, you craft weapons and items, you grow some plants and breed some animals, you can cook some recipes, you can build your entire home and decorate it, you can build an entire village and populate it with a bunch of NPCs, there's a quest system and a giant open world, and it all works in either solo or multiplayer with raids and everything. So a ton of mechanics, and again all of this built by just a single dev. However, I said this is a survival crafting indie game, when I should have said this was a survival crafting indie game. If you go to the store page, you can no longer buy it, so it says it is no longer available on Steam. This one came out all the way back in 2019, and people seem to like it, 100 reviews at 94% positive. Then it was also getting pretty regular updates, so a ton of updates over these past few years. But recently Dev posted this message, the end of Repoly. So here it says, hey there girls and guys, I'm very sad to tell you that I'm not able to finish the work I have started 5 years ago. So right away, this is important. So it was a hell of a journey, and as all time players may know, I did running in circles all the time. So this is another very important point. I changed the map 4 times, changed systems forward and backwards just to do something but not finishing the game and do the right thing. I was lost for most of the time, again, very important point. Then as a single developer I can say, never start something that is too big for you and I can tell this project is much too big for me alone, it is sad but true. The game won't be removed, I don't know when but it is in the hands of Steam to do it. I'm really sorry for all the hope I fired in you and I can understand if people do not like it but I have to do it, I have to quit. It was my baby that I wanted to raise, but I simply was not strong enough for it. A hard step for me, but it is necessary for my mental health to quit before I get broke. Another very important point. Again, sorry to disappoint you. So definitely a sad message of someone who was trying to work on a game for quite a long time, and despite that, despite constantly putting out updates, eventually the pressure was too much, and basically for their mental health they had to essentially quit the project and move on forward. Now this is not necessarily too uncommon, meaning starting a project, seeing that the project the scope is way too big, and eventually having to abandon that project. That is a mistake that I'm guessing pretty much every single developer has gone through. Now I can say I myself have definitely gone through that one. When I started making flash games, for some reason for about my third flash game, I decided okay I'm going to do an MMO game, I'm going to do something with cops and robbers. That was a fun idea but it was definitely way too much for my skill set at the time. So when I say that everyone falls for this mistake, I'm definitely including myself in that. So overscoping is one issue and the other one is right here, making a project for 5 years. That is a real long time, and it has been in early access for most of that time. Meaning for all this time there were players who actually bought the game who were potentially sending messages asking when's the next update, when's the next something. So any mentions here for my mental health, I can definitely empathize with that. One thing that not a lot of people realize is the amount of stress you feel once you put out a game on early access. Which from the player's perspective does make sense, they want to know that if they bought a game in early access that it's not going to be abandoned, it is a game that is actually getting development. So it kind of makes sense for the players to be consistently looking for updates. But on the other hand, as a developer, you do feel quite a lot of pressure of seeing people every single day asking about updates. Obviously it's not the same person, but it's a different person every single day asking about updates, and that can definitely be quite stressful. One of my games, Survivor Squad Gauntlets, was on early access for quite a while, and I did push out updates pretty much every single week without fail, so I did that non-stop for over a year, I think. Another very important thing is what it says here about being lost most of the time. So it says here it was a hell of a journey and as all time players may know I did it running in circles all the time. Changed the map 4 times, changed systems forward and backwards just to do something but not finishing the game to do the right thing. So this speaks to something extremely important which is planning, having an actual plan for reaching the final destination. Again speaking from experience when I was working on all of these updates for my game, thankfully I did have a plan, I did know what I was working towards, towards reaching the final destination, the final game release. But still even then it was actually quite difficult to stick with that plan. So once again, going back to the 5 years thing, I don't think I would have been able to do that for 5 years straight, 5 years pushing out weekly updates, I don't think I could have done it. So that's another negative about making games for so long, spending all that time in early access with constant stress, constant people asking for updates, that is definitely quite tricky. And on the time itself, simply some people can work on a single project for a very long time, like for example Stardew Valley was made in I don't know how many years, the developer was able to work on that game consistently every single day, non-stop for many many years, but not everyone can handle that. I know for myself I cannot handle that, I really could not stand to work on a single project, just one project for many many years on time. That is another reason why I highly advise you to not spend multiple years working on a single game. Now while this message is quite sad, someone being unable to finish their game, thankfully most of the comments are actually quite nice. In many times the internet can be a very nasty place, but sometimes can actually have quite a bit of compassion. 
Now, the good news is this developer is definitely very skilled. You have to be very skilled to build a game kind of like this, something with so many systems, so many interlocking systems, all of them working together. Building a game of this scale with this complexity is not an easy task. So hopefully the developer and really all of you can learn at least two things from this experience. So number one is how to have a proper plan so you know exactly where you're going. And number two, how to manage to actually cut down scope and make something that is manageable. With those two things in mind, I'm sure this developer will be able to make many awesome games in the future. And for you watching this, make sure you keep those things in mind. Also, make sure you don't fall for that same mistake. My advice is always make smaller games. I would not advise you to spend multiple years working on a single game, unless you're already a very experienced developer. And for beginners, I would even go so far as to say, don't make anything longer than, let's say, three to six months. You'll learn a lot more by making multiple small games as opposed to just one large game. If you attempt to make a giant project as a beginner, chances are you are going to end up in the same scenario. You're going to make some kind of progress, build some kind of thing, but at some point, really just drop it. Which again, is the exact same thing that happened to me in that Flash game. Now, thankfully, I did manage to quit that project after about three months, so I didn't lose too much time. Thankfully, I didn't spend five years working on that project. So you do have to be brutal with your own scope management. Find out what game you think you can make in about six months. Find out that scope, then cut it in half and cut it in half again. If you do that, then you might indeed end up with an idea that you can build in about six months. Although, if you do find yourself in this scenario, working on a game for way too long and you can't see the end of sight, if so, then personally, instead of quitting and basically letting all of this work out of waste, instead of that, I would just take a very hard look at the current state of the game and come up with a plan of getting it to a complete state as quickly as possible. Now, since this game was in early access, we can actually see a sort of roadmap right here. So, looking at all of this, looking at this list, First of all, I would not add some character customization. I would just keep a bunch of standard handmade characters, just a handful of them, that's enough. Then I would not add more mounts and more pets. From the videos, it seems like these features are already implemented, so there are already mounts and pets. So if those systems already exist, I would just not add any more content onto them. But if the systems have some issues and do not work, then I would simply not bother trying to make this work. Then for the NPCs, for these I would prepare really just the bare minimum to make essentially all the other systems work. So maybe just an NPC to sell some weapons, another NPC to sell some items, one to give you quests and so on. Speaking of quests, here it says more quests. So on that, I would not add a ton of side quests. I would simply add basically just a main quest. So just one where you come out of some kind of beginner tutorial area and you speak with some kind of person who tells you to go to some kind of village. Then from that village, it tells you about the big bad guy at the end of the game. And the goal to complete the game is simply defeat that big bad guy. So I would essentially make really just one main quest. Then perhaps a bunch of other much, much smaller quests, essentially just to act as tutorials for all the other systems. So for planting things, for handling pets and so on. So I'd make some very tiny mini quests, essentially as tutorials, and then really just have one big quest, finding the big bad guy and defeat them. So again, nothing that would require building entire new systems, really just using what exists already and just building some content to make it more of a cohesive experience. Then for random events, I would also scrap that. For a classification system, I'm not sure what this is. I'm guessing it's some kind of weapon rarity system. If so, either way, yep, I would scrap it. I would have just a handful of pre-made items and that's really it. Then for the unlevel system, I'm guessing this means some kind of progression and a game like this really does need some kind of progression. So for that, I would make something super basic. Literally just add some kind of experience on pretty much all kinds of actions. So as the player is playing the game just normally, they're eventually getting some EXP, leveling up, gaining more strength and so on. So in the beginning, they're way too weak to defeat the big bad guy, but after a while, they'll level up and they have enough skills to do it. And then over here, maybe dedicated server with up to 100 players. For that, I would also absolutely scrap this. The game already has online mode, so already has some multiplayer, but depending on how that is going, meaning depending on how many bugs the online actually has, because multiplayer is always a lot more difficult than making something single player, if that is one of the main causes of issues, if that is one of the main things that essentially makes half the game broken, if that is the case, I would really just scrap the multiplayer entirely and just make it work as a single player game. So in general, that would be my rough plan for essentially taking this as it exists and making a nice complete project out of it. I think that could be doable in, let's say, one to two months, and doing so, you would not necessarily lose all these five years of work put into this game. Now, one good attribute that I have that I feel has served me very well during my game dev career is simply the fact that I am not a perfectionist. Personally, I have no interest in making perfect games. I really just want to make fun, interesting games that are fun to play. I am not trying to build masterpieces. I'm not trying to make something perfect. So for me, it is relatively easy for me to look at this list and figure out some kind of way to make this a complete game without being a perfect game. That is because, again, I really don't have the mentality of if it's not perfect, then it's not worth doing it. For me, as long as it's good, as long as it's a fun experience, then it is definitely worth it. But I understand that different people work differently. Some people are really obsessed with perfectionism and they have to make the game be as perfect as possible. Otherwise, they don't want to do it. That can be an admirable trait for making something that is a proper masterpiece, but it can also really mess you up and end up losing, let's say, five years of development. 
So if the choice is between either releasing nothing or releasing something that is not necessarily perfect, in that case, I think the choice is obvious. Just release something not necessarily perfect, but still a fun experience. Again, looking at the game over here, the reviews, they are positive and 100 reviews, that is a decent amount. So people do enjoy the core base that is inside of this. So I don't think this requires essentially giving all this away just because you can't reach the exact perfect endpoint you want. So that would be my advice to this dev. Come up with a plan, kind of like I mentioned, to get the game to a playable state. You essentially do the bare minimum to complete it without adding all kinds of new systems and content and so on. But regardless, like I said, I'm sure this dev won't do something really great. They are definitely skilled and as long as they learn a bunch of lessons from this project, as long as they do that, I'm sure they will find tons of success in the future. And my advice to you is really the same. Learn from others, learn from what others do right and wrong, and use that to guide yourself in your plans. Make sure you yourself don't fall into the same traps. But at the same time, don't punish yourself too severely if you do. Like I said, I myself have fallen into this trap many times. I tried to be way too ambitious with that Flash game, and it caused me to lose a bunch of months. But in the end, I did manage to get out, I did manage to push forward, and after that, I did end up managing to have a pretty successful indie game dev career. And actually, since I recorded this video, there's been an update to this story. The game is back on sale, and the developer wrote another post. Basically, they're back to working on the game because they missed it. So that sounds great, but again, I hope there's a proper plan to take it to the finish line. Otherwise, this scenario might just repeat again in the future. So I wish the best of luck to the developer of this game, and I hope it manages to hit 1.0. And if you want to see how I managed to make a living from my games for 10 years and make over a million dollars, then watch this video next. Alright, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.